Mr. Walsh is up on our fucking leaderboard now, huh? Well, there's a way to make this more efficient. When you're training for MMA shit, you do MMA shit. When you're training in the gym, you do gym shit. This is kind of that weird in-between zone. It's not the best for either one. I wanted to like this. I really did. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for RP Strength. I've been a professor of sport exercise science for a while. I have a PhD in sport physiology. I'm a competitive bodybuilder and Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler. And I've known to have a knack for acting. Yes, yes, I went to a, it's got the video guy, what's it called, a thespian academy? Until I was 15. But after the crash, I could no longer act. Google that. In any case, today we have a very special video where me, the exercise scientist, I guess I really am one of those, so no quotes required, is going to be reviewing Mr. Jake Gyllenhaal's preparation for his amazing physique in the latest blockbuster hit. Do people still say that? What exactly is a blockbuster? I never could tell. Uh, Roadhouse, which is a remake of an original movie also called Roadhouse with the ever awesome Patrick Swayze RIP. RIP, right, Scott's video guy? RIP. Damn. All right, let's get into it. Folks, so first off, let's talk about who Jake Gyllenhaal really is. I know maybe three things, arguably four about him. One, he's known to be an actually good actor who can act. That is a lot of people in Hollywood do not fall into that description. Two, I know that he has a sister named Maggie Gyllenhaal. Scott's a video guy, am I, am I right on that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, she looks remarkably like him, by the way. And the third thing I know about him is that he has these puppy dog, dreamy eyes. He looks so sad. Like he need a hug from me. 240 pound, hairy and veiny me. Yeah, boy. Yes, I said hairy and veiny. That applies to my entire body. Think that through. Even your tongue, Dr. Mike? That's disgusting. Why would you say that? Also, Dr. Mike, who just said that. And the fourth thing that I now know he's known for is having a fucking completely ripped to shit body for Roadhouse. Holy balls. I was not ready for the shit. My wife and I just saw the movie a little bit ago, and I have to admit, I was under the influence of edible marijuana during the entire film. It's tough to watch a movie like this sober. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> I'm kidding, folks. Sobriety is the best way to do everything. Uh, well, most things. Let's find out what Jake Gyllenhaal did to get in shape for this role. And the first thing we have is a written statement. This is like a fucking court proceeding by his trainer, a gentleman named Jason Walsh. The pair worked together to hone Jake's body for Roadhouse for over a year, according to Walsh. But that doesn't mean that it took that long to achieve the physique you'll see on screen, or that Gyllenhaal was that level of ripped for the whole shoot period. You don't always stay ultra ripped and lean for months and months of filming. That would be possible, but insanely demanding. It would probably degrade his cognitive abilities in the short term and thus his acting. So instead of, hey, get out of this bar, he'd be like, hey, um, like a, do you have like a hot dog or something I can eat? Some shit like that. A lot of people will watch the shit and go, oh my God, Jake Gyllenhaal. Google, how did he get ripped? And see some old bullshit about eight weeks, 12 weeks, blah, blah, blah. The fact that Jason Walsh, his trainer, is saying, look, the shit took a year is awesome because it's like, oh yeah, shit that was really impressive takes a while to do. The program is split into several progressive phases. Bro, I like it. Most Hollywood trainers are like, the phase is we do a BOSU ball and then you eat a yoga block and you're ready to go. This is fucking dope. And here's the best part. Starting the baseline phase to establish the conditioning, a hypertrophy phase to build muscle the angelic harps are playing for me. I love this a ton. Then a sports specific phase to reinforce the movement patterns he would need to do on camera. And because this is a fighting movie, not just carrying fake guns around and pretending to shoot the movie, this f**ks, it's legit. Jake Gyllenhaal did some shit on camera that like if you just did hypertrophy training, man, you could pull your hamstring trying to do that shit. But they did a sports specific phase to reinforce the movement patterns of fake fighting on camera, which is, is quite physical itself. I really, really like that. Scott's a video guy. Mr. Walsh is up on our f***ing leaderboard now, huh? Well... Oh, I said now. Yeah. Before we review the footage of the f***ery that no doubt will ensue. He was the guy that did the hump exercise with Brie Larson. Go, oh, god damn it, that guy, f***. Yeah. F***. 
All right, let's see what the f is going on here. Train like Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay, we got some f and some good stuff mixed in. Hi, I'm Jason Walsh. I'm coming to you from my studio Rise Movement in Los Angeles, California. Whoa. Hey, Scott, is it just me or is there something up with his eyes? Like he maybe like doesn't have a soul? As you were. <laughs> when I received the news that Jay got the role for Rhoda. Hey, okay, so Jason Walsh does have the angle here, but he looks f***ing pretty jacked, so he might know some things by experience as well. Jake Gyllenhaal looks half asleep, which he normally looks half asleep. That's what I'm talking about, the puppy dog eyes. Nobody looks like at you like that except for two people. Mm, people. Jake Gyllenhaal and your rescue pit. That's it. Not only did Jake need aesthetics, but needed to perform stunts across from Conor McGregor. One thing that is baffling is that Conor McGregor's head is roughly twice the size of Jake Gyllenhaal's head, even though he is a little bit shorter. When you fight pro fighters, sometimes you realize they're, as the colloquial statement goes, built different. You don't want to hit Conor McGregor in the face. That's going to break your f***ing hand. That's scary as f***. A professional athlete in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the next clip they go to, he's like telling the cameraman to go f himself. Oh, you fucking fuck. I'm fucking drunk, aren't I? Oy. I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Okay, so I'll tell you real talk, the fight would be over right there. That's a broken nose, probably a concussion, and Jake Gyllenhaal would fall and get beat to death. Um, but because he in this movie is a UFC champion, maybe that was not the case. I then had to sit down and build a program that would ultimately build the foundation of the Dalton character. Oh, the workout. Finally, men's health. Generally, we spend a few minutes each session moving, trying to get the core body to mature up. Few minutes. I love that. I don't have any problem with mobility drills. I do some myself. They're very minimal. And the few minutes is dope because if it takes longer than a few minutes, you're f***ing wasting your time. Most mobility is built through compound, full range of motion, ultra deep stretch lifting and whatever other really intense yoga or Pilates you want to do on the side, which requires its own time investment. Mobility drills are cool as a great warm up, and it just takes a few minutes. It's awesome. It checks the warm up box and the slight mobility enhancement box. If it's taking you longer than, gee, 15 or 20 minutes, you're doing something wrong. You're wasting a lot of time. The Proteus is an amazing piece of equipment used mostly by performance centers to help train athletes in every plane of motion and also to help increase power production. Whoa. That's like the handle you get to drive the fucking mech warrior thing that you're inside in the fucking matrix. If you're training for that, I guess it's real sport specific. Um, it's interesting that like it allows you to vector force side to side and forward. Kind of neat, kind of neat. We use it primarily for priming the nervous system, proprioception, learning movement patterns, and a lot for warming up joints and metabolic training. Uh, yeah, that's all right on. This is overvalued, but right on. Boxing moves help train rotational power and build core strength. Uh, that's also correct. Not bad, men's health. All right. Isometrics are a staple here at Rise Movement. We use them all the time to help increase strength and stamina at different joint angles. Oh, God. Isometrics are one of the worst objective ways to train. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why you need to increase stamina at certain joint angles. Technically speaking, there's an infinite number of joint angles between something like here and something like here. If you train at only very specific angles with isometrics, you do get that sort of spe specificity response. So if you want to be ultra strong right here, it's good to train right here. But if you do dynamic work, which means you have a concentric component and an eccentric component, then you get stronger and develop more general ability to have stamina through that entire range of motion. And because acting for physical roles is such a diverse thing, you have to basically be totally in charge of your body. You guys see that athleticism? Ooh. You have to be to totally in charge of your body and be able to master it through every conceivable way it can be moved. And that means that dynamic, full range of motion, often compound barbell and dumbbell and machine resistance training is really the best way to get at this. Uh, isometric holds aren't that hard. They train something oddly specific and um, just don't transfer super well to athletic performance. No, do they build as much muscle mass and build nearly as much strength as dynamic training. And they, because they don't take you through a full range of motion, don't um, prepare your joints for that kind of pounding. And let me tell you, there is no avoiding hard training if you want to grow. But if you want to grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track 
monitoring and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results. It's just better overall to do dynamic shit because it's better for your joints, makes them stronger, makes them more resilient, your muscles, et cetera, et cetera. Row holds build mid-back strength and shoulder stability. So do dynamic rows, but they also build way more muscle and way more movement competence and way more insurance that your joints will continue to be strong, which this doesn't build all that much. And I doubt that you at home, as men, men's health assumes, are, are training to build mid-back strength and shoulder stability. Do you have a problem with shoulder stability? Can you imagine talking to someone at the gym like, hey man, what's your name again? He's like, Kyle, bro. What's up, Kyle? What you in here for, bro? And he's like, man, just trying to work on my uh, mid-back strength and shoulder stability. I'm like, oh, I see. Do you have like a handler? Did you run away from an insane asylum? That would be my next question. So, odd. Odd flex. Most of the sets that we do are time sets. We try to keep his work capacity up. Whatever the f is happening here is sure shit, not work capacity. Does Jake Gyllenhaal look to you like he's pushing as hard as he can or remotely close? No, it looks like, well, he's kind of enslaved by the Ottoman Empire and is pushing something purposelessly and no work required when the guards are just laughing at him. That's what the f that looks like to me. And it looks like he's sandbagging too. No offense, I don't mean to call anyone out, but sled work is really good for getting awesome at pushing and pulling a sled. Outside of that, it has very little transfer to much of anything else. Something like squats and shoulder presses would do whatever job you think sleds do better than what sleds do. To that end, if you're gonna use sled work to get better at sled pushing and pulling, you gotta fucking try, which means you gotta move those goddamn feet and push the shit faster. Or there needs to be a huge range of motion involved with your step and a lot of grunting. It just it just looks like we're getting some work done, which does technically build work capacity, but regular cardio, running on a treadmill, dare I say, lifting weights with short rest intervals through huge ranges of motion, that builds way more work capacity and burns more calories and gets you jacked and gets joint resilience up in a way that sled work at this pace just fucking doesn't. It's just like this thing that Hollywood does a lot, which is like make something look cool and make it look hard without it actually doing a fucking good job at training you the way you're supposed to be trained. And it's not actually that hard. It's like rife with the shit. It's awful. I fucking hate it. God damn it. We always keep the heavy primitive work. Did you say primitive? You guys, I did actually examine the anthropological record just yesterday. And while we do see cave paintings, people hunting gazelles, we have yet to see someone do a safety squat. All right. If you like how this is going and you desperately want to see more unrated triple X content, I don't know if we can promise that. We'll definitely try. And you have spare money. We have a member section. And if you join to be a YouTube member, then you can get tons of other videos, super sciencey, in-depth stuff for you serious folks and extended editions of videos just like these, including the extended edition of this one. So give it a click and uh, click away and click, click, click and make me money. God damn it. My butlers need to buy more sports cars for me to occasionally look at while uh, figuring out if I want a platinum or gold plated mustache next. Whether it's squats or deadlifts, and the variations thereof, we want to keep the muscle coordination at a high. Squats and deadlifts require a very small amount of muscle coordination. These are some of the easiest lifts you can do in the world. Olympic weightlifting requires substantially more muscle coordination. And you know what requires even more? Combat training, like ostensibly they were doing to get him in shape for this role and get him ready to do some sort of fall combat. So squats and deadlifts are really good for building size in the lower body and through the back. They're really good at building overall strength, but like coordination and all that shit, uh, movement complexity, this is a very simple movement, man. There's like three joints involved in each one. F that. And they're, it's really slow and very predictable and the same every single time. Um, also, he's not going very deep. I wanted to like this. I really did. Safety bar squats, says men's health. Blast your legs without challenging shoulder mobility. That's true. All right. Grip work is essential as it seems to be one of the limiting factors in the gym. You guys know how you can get all of the limiting factors of your grip to completely disappear? And yes, this is sponsored, but yes, I do actually believe it is true. VersaGrips is a product that is much like a strap that goes around and wraps around the bar 
it attaches directly to your wrist, and once it wraps around the bar and you put your hand over it, it is made of some kind of mystery, sticky material that I think they found in a crashed alien spaceship in Nevada in 1946. But basically, your arm will rip the fuck off off your body before that shit lets go. If you use VersaGrips in the gym on your pulling and shoulder exercises, you will not be limited by grip, and you don't have to spend a lot of your precious time training forearms unless you want jack forearms. And here's another thing. You cannot get forearms strong enough to truly remove them as a limiting factor if you're developing your back and shoulders as well as you can. A little while back, I was doing strict lateral raises to just at parallel with 60 pounds for sets of 15. 60 pounds in each hand. There is no way I can pinch grip 60 pounds. That's so goddamn much. And my forearms are f***ing jacked, but the thing is my shoulders are more jacked. Your shoulders are bigger than your forearms, and your back is way bigger than stronger. There's nobody that can't enhance their pull-up and row and deadlift and stiff like a deadlift ability with using Versa grips. There's just nobody that can say, okay, I don't really need the Versas, I just need my hands. If that's the case, your back and shoulders are f***ing weak, my man. If you get yourself some f***ing Versas, you can eliminate this entire problem. Also, chalk eliminates most of the problem, God damn it. So forearm drills, are not really drills, it's just forearm training, first of all. I don't know why this is called a drill, but it's dope or whatever. It just so it happens to be that that's not really the reason you would train forearms. You would train forearms to make them bigger and stronger and juicier in their own right. But if you have a limiting factor problem, link in the description, I guess, because VersaGrips is, uh, is how to do that shit, for real. Here we see some examples more relatable to MMA training, keeping the body in check with offset loading and movements more imperative to sport. Offset loading. This is okay to do. Because of the offset, it's going to take you a little bit more effort to balance. And that balance and adjustment effort is going to reduce how much you can push your legs. And because men's health here says lunges build leg strength, they build less of it when you're offset. The way you build size and strength best is when you're very well balanced. When you're off balance, your body decides it's not going to activate as much of the muscle as it usually does. And you don't activate as much of it and as much of it does not get stronger and as much of it does not grow. So it's okay to do this, but what I would prefer is that they kept the training pretty conventional in the gym, compound, barbell, dumbbell, and machine heavy basics, and then got uh, Jake Gyllenhaal into, and I know it sounds crazy, an MMA gym to do MMA drills with the MMA guys. A couple months of that shit, he's going to look real f***ing competent on camera without having to do a bunch of bag f***ery, whatever he's carrying, like a f***ing, Scott, was that a heavy bag he's carrying? Jesus Christ without doing that shit and interfering with his weight workout. There's a way to make this more efficient. When you're training for MMA shit, you do MMA shit. When you're training in the gym, you do gym shit. This is kind of that weird in-between zone. It's not the best for either one. It's important to keep the stimuli broad with variations of reps, sets, loads, and different tempos. False. JK, that's totally fine, except the Swiss bar press is a great movement. However, oh, and Sornax is a great company, but a floor press, Definitely, as Men's Health has said here, limits, lets you train chest heavy by limiting range of motion. But while it lets you train your chest heavy, thus putting more stress on your elbows and shoulders, it actually trains it for less of a muscle growth benefit because the deep stretch does a lot of muscle growth benefit that you skip out on if you do this for literally partial reps. In addition, if you want to get good at being sort of a combat athlete, you have to be strong in every range of motion you can think of. Because if you put yourself into that range of motion in movement, you have to be safe and strong there. That is what we mean by mobility, strength through a really high degree of range of motion. And if you're fighting a real person in real life, they may put you into positions in which you do not want to feel uncomfortable or not super strong. So for example, if someone is on top of you and you always stop your skull crushers here, and they push your hands down and they're on top of you to here, you may be uncharacteristically weak here. So if you do full range of motion skull crushers, when you get here, you can hit bump, push them out, take the top side, and start hurting them in a way that's legally defensible in your context. But yeah, uh, the floor press is a f***ing dog shit exercise. The diet part of this is really critical, critical for maintaining and looking a certain way. Correct. It's not something that's sustainable. <gasps> is he pushing one of my cars? How the f*** did he get that? The Perry Workout Nutrition from Biotest, The Surge. Uh, Sponsored by Biotest. I love it. My man. Really kept us going, gave us the fuel that we needed for these workouts. And the post-workout nutrition from Rise 311 Protein 
that started in the kitchen and ended up being a great product, so we got it out there. Is Jay Gyllenhaal, like, partnered with these companies? Was that his voice, or was that the trainer guy's voice? Still the trainer, right? Huh. All right, you got to rep your brand, my man. Respect. You're going to have a great trainer, a great program. Wait, that was all they said about diet? But yeah, there was a chicken breast flipped at one point, some shots of UFC and him pushing a car, and then two supplement plugs. That tells me everything I need to know about his diet. Thanks, Men's Health. We keep things in balance with push-pull ribs. Uh, uh, what do you mean balance? I don't understand what that means. Don't worry, you don't understand what it means either. Followed by my favorite, some primitive climbing sprints. Primitive climbing sprints. There's nothing primitive about climbing sprints. The Versa climber was not available in primitive times. This would be something, if you got really good at, would help you last through multiple rounds of real fighting and real MMA training. Um, he's not doing that, though, so I'm not exactly sure why the fuck this is being done. <sighs> that was fun. That was fun. Things I didn't like first. Let's end on a high note. The inclusion of a bunch of funky moves and offloaded carries and sled pushes and pulls. Generally not a good use of time to get the body you want and the athletic ability that you want. It's better to do more conventional lifting and um, stick to working with MMA people to get MMA abilities. So that is what it is. The usual Hollywood BS reared its ugly head again. But there was some good stuff. I do like the intensity he brought to the training. A lot of consistency brought to training. And the fact that he was preparing for like a year is really, really awesome, which speaks to the idea that anything that's worth doing is going to take some fucking work and then it's going to be awesome. So I'm going to grade this as God damn you, Hollywood out of 10. I've been Dr. Mike. Click on things, buy things, like, follow, subscribe. <sighs> oh, and go watch the movie. The movie's fucking sweet. See you guys next time. All right. That was fun. Hopefully you guys had fun too. Maybe we learned a little something. Who knows? Right over here is going to be a video that the YouTube algorithm, with all of its wisdom, thinks you should click on for the fun to continue so that eight hours later, you have no idea where you are, but you went down an RPK hole. Benefit, you get to have some fun and maybe it'll destroy your life. Cost is we get paid while you watch our videos. I have no idea what I'm saying. See you guys next time.